And then I will bow my hand. And, uh, and I'm going to come over to the dark side. The days of the Triwizard Tournament may be long behind us, but there's still so much to explore behind the scenes. Like the magic that went into making a bunch of awkward teenagers look like they can dance. Yes! <laughs> Number one. At least the twins didn't need to use a doubling charm. Bottoms up. Jamie, you go first. Am I looking at the right bloke? It's hard enough keeping the twins straight when they're not hidden behind beards and wild hair. Now it's just downright impossible. Sometimes, as a director, it's easier to just show the actors what you mean rather than try and explain it. It's just too bad he showed the wrong twin. Kidding. Maybe. You know when you shouldn't break a director's rib? <sighs> Number two. The practical elements really elevate the viewing experience. Dragons. That's the first task. A maquette of the dragon was made with a 14-foot wingspan. And later, the model was scanned to create a CG version of it. Accio Firebolt! Accio Firebolt! Yeah, Harry definitely conjured the wrong thing that first time. Whoops. He's probably just exhausted from all the physical work, let's be real. It's a very challenging uh, physical endurance test. Number three, we wonder how bad the burns were. One of the most dangerous stunts Radcliffe had to do was slide down the side of a building. He slid 40 freaking feet, like 40 freaking times. Okay, maybe not 40 times, but at least three. That was really scary. Anyone will be scared, I'm convinced. Number four, Ron and McGonagall sitting in a tree. To dance is to let the body breathe. Professor McGonagall has the best advice. We would have her as our dance teacher any day. Inside every girl, a secret swarm slumbers, longing to burst forth and take flight. A true poet. And like Maggie Smith teaching Rupert to dance while hanging out in her robes is just hilarious. I had to try to teach Rupert to dance the other day. That was pretty strenuous. Do you think they actually let her teach him, or do you think this was just a rehearsal? When we came off the set, Rupert was, like, he just looked at us and said, don't say anything. Number five. While Hermione was having her Cinderella moment, Emma was most definitely not. Her dress went through a ton of designs and alterations. She was terrified she'd damage it. I would not sit in it, I would not walk in it, I would not do anything in it apart from what I had to do in it. That didn't help any because I got down about three steps and fell down <laughs> in front of the whole set. Daniel Radcliffe always thought Emma was beautiful and was confused about Hermione's whole Cinderella transformation moment. Emma was never ugly. Dan was also a klutz, but that wasn't totally his fault. I only had about four days to learn because I was doing another scene. He made so many mistakes during filming that they decided to just capture footage of him from the waist up. I got to about halfway through, and then I would kind of just lose it completely. Honestly, that's relatable. What I like about Harry is he's pathetic at, at the whole romance thing. He's rubbish. Number six. No amount of prep would make these actors elegant. It's the best set I've seen so far, I think. The description in the book was that the ball was an ice palace. We always imagined prom would look something like this. Did yours? Let us know in the comments. The whole thing, of course, looked like Swarovski crystal and was stunning. Professor McGonagall's dance lessons must not have paid off. None of us had a clue what we were doing. The secret is, even as adults, none of us have any clue how life works. I'm afraid of falling or something and everybody turn around pointing and laughing. Remember how Emma Watson once admitted to having a little crush on Tom Felton? No practice, just going straight into it. Lucky man, lucky man. Tom must have reciprocated it. Just winging it must have been a joke because seconds before, the director was showing them what to do. I'd like to be able to dance, but I just don't want to learn, if you know what I mean. That's okay, there's always the mosh pit. So yeah, that'll be the first time you're seeing a mosh pit at Hogwarts. Number seven. This may be the most CGI Harry Potter ever used. Out of the water, the giant pool is surrounded by green screens. To light up the tank, they used dozens of fluorescent tubes that shone on the outside of the tank so that it would glow on the inside. And inside of the tank, 
The entire thing is one giant 20-foot pool surrounded by blue screens. The underwater environment that was created almost entirely from CGI was inspired by a Scottish loch. The CGI merpeople were designed to look mythical, but getting them to look creepy took work. In order to make it look like Daniel was acting off of something, there were two divers in blue suits grabbing at him. Radcliffe spent roughly 42 hours underwater filming. He did scuba training for six months, and six weeks were spent filming. We're not sure we could handle that much water. We obviously wanted to get as much practice in as possible for the underwater stuff. Number eight, Gillyweed is only one part of Dan's transformation. An hour and a half was dedicated to applying Dan's silicone prosthetics. They needed to be extra secure to survive the underwater climate. Number nine, if only they could capture every shot they needed in one take. They had underwater sanctuaries in place that Daniel could use to slip in for a minute and just take a good breath so that he didn't have to come back up to the surface. It had both windows and a chimney. There were 20 people on the diving team helping Daniel out. Once he accidentally gave the wrong signal to the dive team, that meant, This means, quick, I'm drowning, get me up to the surface. Whereas to me, that means, hey, I'm fine. The entire team was in a flurry to help him out. Oopsie. Dan had to record his lines after filming in a tiny bucket with an underwater microphone. Communicating with Radcliffe underwater was tough. They'd have to talk through a chain of people and it slowed up the process immensely. After all the work he went through, you know what thanks he got? He wound up with two ear infections from all his time spent underwater. The actor who plays Victor Crumb was terrified of deep water. To get over his fear, he would work on his anxiety in the shower. We know what you're thinking, huh? He was allowing the water coming from the shower head to overwhelm him so that he could practice being in the tank. Robert Pattinson struggled too, because he would get disoriented underwater, not knowing which way was up. End of a long, hard day, I'm off. Number 10, start the effects and action. Pattinson isn't being attacked by living vines, of course, but he is being dragged back by a cord. That's switched out for a vine in the following shot. These are all the wounds from being attacked by the uh, magical hedge. We can always count on Robert to demystify the experience for us, magical hedge. <laughs> the hedge was 25 to 40 feet high, and the path only 5 feet wide to make it feel super claustrophobic. Some game, huh? Some game. Number 11, and now, here comes the moment we waited four movies for, Voldemort's big reveal. He wore one prosthetic to cover up his eyebrows, and the rest was done with CGI. In the books, Voldemort had red eyes, but that was changed in the movies because humans are scarier than monsters. True story. Without the music to set the tone, Voldemort kinda comes off as comedic. <laughs> Number 12. We are dedicating an entire spot to Robert Pattinson being... Man, this sure does look like it hurts. But that one, they had to be like a coil. I had to get hit in my groin. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is definitely one of our favorites in the series. What's your favorite movie from the series? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.